Hello everyone, Chapman Cena here, and today we're making a virtualized Untangle appliance. Um, the reason why you'd want to do this, uh, let's say you had, um, we'll actually back up a bit. Now, with Untangle, uh, normally you dedicate a full machine to Untangle. Um, but let's say you're tight on budget or you want to run Untangle for your home lab and don't want to dedicate an entire machine just to Untangle then uh, I'm going to show you a way to do that. Now, um, the pros of this are, of course, you can you maximize how much uh, you can do with your hardware. For instance, if you just want Untangle and then on top of that you want a file server, then this is perfect. Uh, you won't need too much, uh, too much more CPU power. Uh, but if you want to run Untangle with a bunch of other things, then you might have to consider more RAM, more CPU. So um, we'll begin. Uh, so the physical setup would be if I just had a machine, uh, you can use uh, ESSI, which would uh, be bare metal and uh, take very little um, away from the hardware in order to run the virtualization. Uh, you can do that or if you want you can run Debian which is you know really light and then on top of that use VirtualBox like I'm doing now um, then uh, the underlying OS is just you know uh, Debian I believe uses a couple hundred megs of RAM and then you can use that as your file server so you have a firewall and the file server you're gonna install Debian or some sort of operating system anyways so you can do that. Okay, so now um, I'm just going to create a VirtualBox uh, machine here. Okay. I'm going to allocate a gig of RAM to Untangle. I normally allocate 20 gigs of hard drive space. Now, what you'll do is, uh, in my case, I'm, I need two network adapters. Okay, so one uh, would go into my existing network. So I'll just hit internal, net, uh, sorry, uh, bridge adapter. That way my Entangle box can hit the internet. And then I'm gonna do an internal network adapter. Now, um, I am not uh, making an actual box. I'm just, uh, this is a demo. So um, what you would do in this case, you'd have uh, two physical network adapters on your box. One that connects to, you, you know, your cable modem or your, your, um, your modem from your internet provider. And then another box that would connect to a, sorry, another adapter that would connect to a switch uh, or something like that, um, which would allow uh, more than one computer to connect to Untangle. Okay. So hit OK, which creates it. Now I normally take uh, take note of the MAC address, the virtual MAC address for the external. Okay, uh, 83, and I'll show you why. So uh, we'll start the machine. It'll ask for the Untangle image. And we'll go through the installation. So installation uh, right now is pretty simple. I'm in Canada, I selected English. And we've been through the installation before in my previous videos, but this will be a, a refresher. Okay, so I'm in the Eastern time zone. Okay, I get this insufficient on 64 bit, which it is. I mean, one gig isn't a whole lot of uh, memory for Untangle, but for demo purposes, we can just ignore that. 
Okay, do I want to proceed with formatting my disk? So I'll say okay. Select yes. And now it's going to go ahead and install the base system. So sometimes this can take a minute. I'll pause the video and we'll wait till this part's done. Okay, so now uh, the installation's done. I'll just ask you to hit continue. So now this is Untangle. One thing with the new versions of Untangle is a side note, uh, the, the boot up times are much better. Um, they've done a lot of work. Uh, I still, Untangle is still one of my very favorite uh, open source firewalls. Uh, the, the amount of features that are in just the free version is still, is, is really, really cool. And the UI has always been uh, pretty much standard. It doesn't change. Uh, and it's, in my experience, it's pretty stable. Okay. So the very first boot is uh, a little slow because uh, there's a lot going on uh, for the first time. Uh, so now uh, it's gonna bring us to the setup. We hit English, hit next. You created an min password. Now you can put in an min email if you wish. Hit next. Okay, remember how I said to note down your uh, MAC address? this is why so see here one thing i wish they did was it would tell you what the ip address is because i know if i get a certain range of ips say um you know anything other than 192.168 i know okay perfect this is my for sure my external because sometimes uh it does a pretty good job but sometimes it's wrong and then you gotta adjust it okay so 83 is my uh quote unquote external address that'll help me get out to the internet I hit next and you'll see here uh, I got a Mac uh, sorry uh, an address via DHCP okay. so I hit next Okay, so now uh, you have two options with uh, Untangled. There's the router mode and transparent. Transparent would be if I had a router and a switch already in place, but I wanted a firewall. I just put the firewall in between the router and the switch and away you go. I actually have a little graph here, so, okay. But in this case, I want it to be a router because, um, you know, let's say I want my internet, my internet provider's modem to connect to my uh, little you know to my box then I can use this now I'm going to disable the DHCP server option only because I don't uh, I don't want this to Im impact my other network somehow so just to be safe this is for my only need you would normally have DHCP turned on for your home network okay then I hit next and now I'll just say do you want to install automatic upgrades so that's up to you. Okay, so now it's finished. So now um, it's going to going to ask if I want to install anything. So I'm not gonna go over that just yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up uh, one of our clients. So I just have a Windows machine here that I use for testing. Okay. And click on the config tab and then network and uh, I'm pretty sure it'll be 2.1 yes so the internal IP is 2.1 okay so I believe I already have the IP address so since I hit internal network only 
right I won't be able if I come here uh, into my host machine and try to ping 2.1 it won't be reachable okay and it won't be reachable because uh, the 2.1 is only between virtual uh, virtual box um, uh, guest OS's okay. so we just go to desktop make sure that you have selected the the proper IP address so I believe I already have this set up Yeah, so I already have it set up. Okay. Now if I surf, if I go to one nine two one six eight two dot one, untangle is there. And now um, I have a virtualized client and firewall uh, that is completely separate from my home network. So if I try, and this is my this is my Ubuntu machine that is not part of the VirtualBox network, and if I try going to Dot two dot one. You'll see that I'm not able to access it. So this is completely different than than the Untangle slash Windows setup here. Now uh, you're from here. You're pretty much done. All you really need is uh, a cable to connect from that second network card that we were talking about earlier to the switch. And then you can connect all your home computers, even your uh, abridged wi like a bridge Wi-Fi access point, uh, and then you can add Wi-Fi, and then you have a fully uh, complete firewall um, with Untangle, and then uh, you can start building, let's say, a file server, whatever you want, uh, or you can have even more virtual machines. And then they can tie in to this 2.1 network or whatever internal network you want. So I hope that this uh, video um, shed some light on what you can do with uh, virtualizing your Untangle box. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And of course, you can always uh, hit me up on email, shamancini2010 at gmail.com or visit my website, shamancini.com. Speak with you soon. Thank you.